just started. Hey, what's up, friends? Me and Mark just wanted to chime in today. Send a little transmission, a little digital hug on a corporation where we're at. First of all, congratulations on making it through this mirror of the fall with all the leaves shedding. Uh, Veterans Day, Veterans Month. November is a tough month. And uh, I'm here today under the rite of passage, otherwise known as COVID. So I may sound a little bit different, slower with the gravity boots on my head, and the gravity boots on my feet. And uh, we want to give a shout out to all of you that came out to the land, that have been out to the land. Wherever you are is exactly where you need to be. Uh, we have a couple of invitations to stay into the practices and what we do, which is our underlying core value is freedom. Freedom to be in your own process, uh, freedom to choose to show up to circle, uh, freedom to take day walks. If you're like me, I need to be um, just about every week I need to fast. That's the deal, how we incorporate these practices into our daily life. There's a lot of beautiful things out there. A lot of people have had some challenging times once they've come out to the land as in life. And how could you not? Um, from personal experience, you know, I say like I'm just learning what I did out there six or seven years ago or whenever that was. Um, and it's this continual death and rebirth process. So, yeah, just want to send that prayer. We see you. We love you. Even if you haven't shown up. We've had people that have not shown up for years and then hit us up and be like, yo, I'm taking three, uh, three day solo time on the land. Can you hold space for that? They've incorporated the practices, right? Many of y'all have come back. You've come back to assist. You've come back to counsel online, in person. You volunteered for us. You brought your medicine in all the different ways. You've held, held it down as net keepers, you know, trying to arrange that freaking Harry Potter sorting hat, you know, and understanding that like it ultimately is what it is. And we continue to look at what it looks like to have a really deeply fully guarded incorporation structure. And even if we do that, we are wild medicine and we will always be that. And we are going to serve the people that actually don't have connections to the VA that can find deep healing and being seen and witnessed on the land. So getting into the land, getting into the heart, getting into our whole stories. So with that, I just wanted to lay that down. Um, we are planning for an incorporation event, a gathering in quarter one of 2024. So we can all just come back share stories of incorporation, but deeply founded in our mirroring workshop, which if I had two days to give any veteran or any human, it would be our mirroring workshop, mirroring for empowerment. It's the jam. So with that, I'm just going to lay down the stick and give it to Mark. Well, shoot. I didn't know what I was going to say up until a min minute ago when you hit that mirroring for empowerment, you know, and, um, and that being like the cat's meow. And if there was one thing that you could give two days to any veteran, it would be to that mirroring piece. And in this moment, the way that that strikes me is, is, is a reminder that like the reason that we go out on the land, the reason that we take those 12 days, you know, and those four days in solo to go out and do that wild and crazy thing is, is to begin the process of waking up and remembering that all the answers to the challenges and the obstacles and the life events that cause us distress are already inside of us. And yet we live in a society that has taught us to provide unsolicited guidance and advice and counsel when it wasn't requested. So I love that you brought in the mirroring piece because I feel like one of the most helpful things, and I think I'm speaking for both of us, Ryan, um, is when somebody stopped telling us what we should and shouldn't do listened to what was up for us and then reflected back in our own words what we had just said you know like so that we could hear ourselves through the lens and through the mirror of another right not offering us anything more than what we had already spoken and there's like this magic sizzle that happens in there of self-discovery when those when those stories when my story when your story when our stories are reflected back to us without a handful of shoulds and shouldn'ts and I think you ought to do that. And I think you ought to do this, but just what we said. So I really like that. And, and, and 
I've been finding it more and more helpful for myself because um, I hear that mirror even 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 in a little bit different way through attending these uh, these uh, this bi monthly council uh, that we've been doing now on Wednesdays, the first and third Wednesday of the month, where I get to show up and share a little bit about what's going on in my life for better and worse, or dump out some dark shit that I'm struggling with, and and then sit back and put the stick down. And hear how other people are going through stuff and, and what they're doing to get through, you know, their moments of both uh, success, achievement, victory, as well as, you know, damn, I'm really struggling with this. So I love that you brought that mirror and piece in, man. It's it's a different way of being. Mm. Well, we have been on a journey of <laughs> our shadow of our mirrors, the light of our mirrors, been cleaning the grime off that mirror of many years in our personal relationship. Um I just wanted to go back to the ceremony for a second because the secret is, you know, a lot of people want veteran rights to be everything that everyone. And the fact is it, it is because we hold a really simple container. But if we just go back to the rite of passage and, and if we just continue to go back to that rite of passage, there was that thing with Meredith Little. She talks about like after Stephen died that we have learned a way, a way to go in, to incend and then do that safely to self-generate ceremonies of our own healing, to come back to base camp when necessary, then to come back and practice deep listening, to mirror that for empowerment, to sever, to be in counsel, to come back to the I am within ourselves, the I am within ourselves, to remember who the fuck we are, as our guy Dell has on his deal when he shows up to counsel, which is so dope. Right. And that process of severance threshold incorporation, it is a model and a way of life. And our offering of incorporation is, is like, how am I incorporating that personally within my life? We need to create spaces that are inviting and welcoming and safe for people to go inside themselves and be witnessed in that journey by others. And how does that happen? We have people that go take solo day walks. We have people that show up to council. We have people that are deeply nourishing those parts of their four shields, their creativity. I get these affirmations from Yolanda that freaking set me straight all day. You know what I mean? So we're, we're all on this path in this study. We just have another story of incorporation of Gabriella driving across country with Debbie, who she met this year, and stopping and seeing Sylvia, one of our amazing guides in Arizona, and meeting all these people in different states. There are so many beautiful stories of incorporation and this unfolding that it, that is happening. And we just really, we want to hear those, you know, more. And if there's ways in which we can show up more to say your individual um, net circle gatherings, let us know. We'll see what we can do to rally around that. Um, we'll continue the conversation with others on these guided you know, Sylvia's offered one. Um, CWCR does incredible, amazing work. Um, we're in conversation with them on what that looks like. But ultimately, it just comes down to ourselves. And if you ask me, um, a lot of counsel without the land or a lot of land without counsel is incomplete. So it needs, like, we, like it needs that community aspect, right? The, the community aspect. And if anything that I'm doing is not informed by my own individual solo time on the land, we're kind of missing the whole point of the rite of passage and y'all know how to do this. You spent 96 hours out there doing that thing. How do we feel that we don't need to like take four hours per week to do the same thing or whatever it is that you need in your nature prescription? I don't know. How do you handle I'm, that? Man, I'm, I'm really glad that you're talking about this, Ryan, because I was having a thing every time you know, you brought November in and, and I think it's for me seasonal in the Pacific Northwest. I start to get a little heavier in my body, a little heavier in my mind and my heart and depressed, seasonal depression, you know, and it's, and, and I've been in this practice now since 2014 and still I forget that I've been, like you said, on the land for 96 hours, rattling a rattle, digging a hole, painting rocks, talking to the bushes and, and, and lo and behold, 
every time I get into a jam, whether it's an argument with my wife or I'm disappointed with my kiddo or I'm just feeling blah. I have these moments of divine inspiration where I walk out in the backyard, I create a threshold, I step across it with intention to be in the land of mystery and wonder and with the intention of how do I navigate this situation that's causing me distress, that's causing me pain and discomfort, that's causing me suffering. And time and time again, whether it's the leaf of the tree or falling from the tree because it's fall, the bird that flies by, you know, the sound of something, I'm reminded of my time on the land and I can enact or invoke some form of small ceremony right there in my own backyard that helps me remain balanced in all four shields and our all four seasons and it's not long thereafter when i cross the threshold and come back that i have the answer that i need i have the proper words that i need to convey to my wife i have the the inspiration that i need to inject into my children for for changes in behavior and then generally speaking i feel better spending time outside unplugged disconnected without distraction so I'm, I'm glad that you're bringing that up. These simple things that we can do every moment of every day to make that dull or darkness shine up a little bit or sharpen up a little bit so that we can continue moving forward in this thing called life. And that invitation, right? That invitation of... I feel like once like we've actually been initiated on the land and we've claimed our belonging there, like the more that we like take our time away from her, she, she gets a little feisty and upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's like, where are you? Why aren't you fostering my, your, your relationship to me? I've got to nourish that. Then we come back. Let's just get to brass tacks. Then we come back to reality, to jobs, to kids, to old ways of being, all of that. And then it just blitzkriegs on our, our face and our bodies and our souls. That's facts. What I have learned over, you know, six years of doing this work and witnessing now over a hundred stories of incorporation in this particular practice is that I've got to subtract. We say this on the land, like if something to nourish and grow, something's got to die, right? So Ryan, in my old way, my ADD, overworking ways of being, um, has to turn out the lights at nine o'clock, sit in silence and in the dark, has to meditate one or two hours a day, has to get to my AA meetings, and I've got to subtract. I've got to create time and containers for the nourishment to maintain the commitment of what I claimed out there on the land. And it still keeps unfolding. What I love about us, and we always want to do more, that our core value, and Mark hit it so perfectly, is that Wherever you are, you're exactly where you need to be. You're doing great. It's all unfolding at the pace that it's supposed to, you know, unfold. We don't have a system, a structure, a guided thing that you have to go through because we know ultimately it's up. Some, it's up to HP, whatever, whatever that is for you, right? But we will continue to create and foster and nurture and grow and learn to create containers that we can come back and dip back into the land, our hearts, and these practices. Because I'll tell you, the journey, my personal journey, it still keeps unfolding. I keep wanting to get into the promised land. There was this poem last night, actually, I sent it to Larry, and it's actually it's something around abandoned hope, which sounds really harsh, but like it's kind of freeing in a way. And it's T.S. Eliot, and there's a line in there, and it says something around, uh, in the darkness you'll find the light, and in the stillness you'll find the dancing. And the more that I can be still and know that I am, I am what I am, then the more I can show up in the world as that person. And it's really helpful to have other crazy weird mofos like this dude here, all of our guides, Larry, Mitch, Semba, Jess, Cher, Trebby, all of those around the Wilderness Guides Council that are holding space for us, you know, witnessing a community, many not veterans, but civilians that get it because we need to be seen in wholeness. Semba. And some, you know, 
And I have a rock from Samba right here. So like I'm talking about like creating that altar deal. I got a rock from Samba. I got this beautiful piece from Samba that I hold close to my heart. And then I've got this protector piece from a barb down in, uh, in Oregon. Grandfather's watch and an old green man and a candle. So it's a lot of yapping. We hope it's helpful. We miss you. We love you. We respect you. Um, there's one more reality, though. I feel like we're missing on what we do. Mark speaks well to it. Is that like we're going through the samskaras and the processes of old ways of being, and we're working through those and building bridges and holding that. And that is tough freaking work. Speak to that, hombre. Working through old ways of being. I want to digress for a moment because because you said something and there was one piece around that altar and you're picking up these objects of power that that have meaning to you, Ryan. And and so I'm just for these initiates out there. How many of you have constructed a personal altar in your home space? A personal altar that represents the four shields of human nature, a personal altar that re re reflects your your objects, your sacred ritualistic objects of power, of of anchorage, of of uh, clarity. And if you haven't, why haven't you? The invitation without expectation is to contemplate that, to throw some sticks up on a bookshelf and some rocks. Um, and when life gets messy or difficult or challenging, to rearrange that altar. Because it needs a little bit of chaos from the east. Rearrange that joker. But we are working through a process, man, of old behavior patterns. And these things are, I mean, like, they're, they're ruts. They're, they're deep well-worn, well-traveled ruts. And we have to give ourselves grace and we have to give other people around us grace uh, because it's a fucking process. You know, right before we got on this call, Ryan, we were talking about the journey that you and I have traveled as individuals uh, from the moments of our very first ceremonies and the peaks and the valleys and the ups and the downs and the lowlights and the highlights. And damn, it hasn't been anything, you know, it hasn't been anything that resembles perfect in accordance with, you know, what, what, what our imaginations in this Western society have, have believed to be perfect. It's just about being aware, aware, okay, in this moment, I'm traveling in the direction that I wish to travel. And then that same awareness and that same, you know, uh, ability to see, okay, wait a minute, I stepped in a direction that I've gone before. I know this isn't the way. Uh, whether it's drinking or drugs or sex or suicidal ideation or long periods of depression, what am I doing in this moment? In this moment, having recognized that I am in familiar water, but uncomfortable water, what am I doing in this moment to change course, to change direction? What am I marking a severance or an end to? And what actions am I taking to become or to get in right alignment and make those micro, not big swinging pendulum adjustments to the inner compass, but micro adjustments to that internal compass to get back on the course towards and of who I am now, not who I was, who I am now. Ooh. And that's Ooh. the question because the answer is in the question and it's different for each of us. The answers in the question. And back into the teachings, what I hear there is wholeness. Like we've, we've already learned how to, to get unstuck. We know what to do when we're overactivated in one of these aspects of ourselves. We're just swimming in the grief, can't get mm -hmm. out of it to get to circle, to, to do something for others, buy some flowers, whatever. Think about somebody else, right? Overdoing to step out into that mystery when I'm getting like to God, like, not one foot, you know, on the earth and all my heads in heaven somewhere to get onto the ground and get dirty and get weird, you know. And when I'm doing that, once I've done that and I've become grounded, then I can actually hold the grief and the forgiveness and all those things because it just never stops those ripples that started out on the land. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good even just to say this. It's really hard. You know, it's hard to do what we do, right? We don't. We serve, we are connected. There's a current, there's a net of mm -hmm. veterans all 
deeply walking in the spirit of the land that assembled and gathered and then dispersed. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to hold that. And I, I feel for net keepers too, right? Trying to get people in line, trying to get in the circle, this and that. Like, it is tough. We are not a tribe. No. We provide an initiatory experience for people to practice incendence and ways of being with the earth themselves as nature and community that foster wholeness. That's what we do. There's a lot of other modalities because we know you got the internal wisdom. So we hope to see you. We hope to see you on Wednesday at this yes. little vets gaving, vets giving deal and come in and bring some, you know, we're poetry people, we're song people, we're dance people, we're authenticity people. Bring in your tears, bring in some joy, bring in some song, bring in a story. Um, and we'll gather like that once in a while. We need all need to be nourished and keep that flame going. I have a little poem to close us out with. And you got closing stuff, Mark. Well, I was just thinking, I was just a reminder that I'm hearing you send out an invitation to all of our folks, anybody and everybody who has participated in veteran rights, anything and everything that Wednesday, the 22nd, we're going to be having a Vets Giving Council online. And I'm hearing you invite all of us to show up, to bring our magic, to bring our song, to bring our poetry, to bring ourselves, to see one another before we uh, dive into turkey or, you know, sushi or whatever it is that we're having for uh, the day of Thanksgiving. Mm. Mm hmm That brought in, I wanted to pause for a moment and say, like, we've lost people in the last few months. Some of y'all have been going some real deep health stuff. Some of y'all are trying to figure out what the fuck did I do out there that have not been that communicative. Some have been showing up consistently. And you know what? All of that, that's whole. That's reality. Um, and so there's a lot of humility compassion and love uh for all every one of you man um and thank you for being a part of our story i want to just add to that ryan that you know if you are one of those people who hasn't come back to council that's okay it's okay because life happens right and if you're also one of those folks that hasn't touched base or shown up it's all right if you're out there and you're in the struggle and you're feeling it and you're like fuck man i don't remember how to move when i get stuck come on back in Come back into base camp, have a cup of tea with Ryan or I or one of the other guides or assistants, and we will happily remind you of the navigational tools of movement through those four shields. Mm. Open invitation without expectation, friends. Navigational tools. All right. So I'll just end with a poem based off of all of that, because we're in it right now as the sun is peeking out in Olympia, Washington. It's a poem called For the One Who is Exhausted. When the rhythm of the heart becomes hectic, time takes on the strain until it breaks. Then all the unattended stress falls in on the mind like an endless increasing weight. The light in the mind becomes dim. Things you could take in your stride before now become laborsome events of will. Weariness invades your spirit. Gravity begins falling inside of you, dragging down every bone. The tide you never valued has gone out and you are marooned on unsure ground. Something within you has closed down, and you cannot push yourself back to life. You have been forced to enter empty time. The desire that drove you has relinquished. There is nothing else to do now but rest and patiently learn to receive the self you have forsaken in the race of days. At first, your thinking will darken, and sadness take over like listless weather. The flow of unwept tears will frighten you. You have traveled too far over false ground. Now your soul has come back to take you. Take refuge in your senses. Open up to all the small miracles you rushed through. Become inclined to watch the way of rain when it falls slow and free. Imitate the habit of twilight, taking time to open the well of color that fostered the brightness of day. Draw alongside the silence of stone until its calmness can claim you. Be excessively gentle with yourself. Stay clear of those vexed in spirit. Learn to linger around someone of ease who feels they have all the time in the world. Gradually, you will return to yourself, 
having learned a new respect for your heart and the joy that dwells far within slow time. Much love. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, the 